Welcome, Anders. Uh, not so much time has passed since our, our last session, but uh, lots of things have happened. We had the, the Fed that uh, left rates unchanged, but they also came in with a projection for GDP growth that was over or was 2.1% uh, for 2024 with a robust labor market. Um, was this a fall off your chair surprise? Well, Jessica, I, I don't really think it was a big surprise for the market that they left the uh, rates unchanged. That was very much priced. But I do think that the forecast is, is fairly interesting. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, when Fed is saying 2.1, uh, they are referring to the fourth quarter this year. Um, most forecasters have expected Q1, Q2 or even Q3 to be weak. Now we're seeing in the data that there is absolutely no sign of that. So, if they are looking at 2.1, uh, growth this year um, at the end. We're probably in an interval for 2024 uh, between two and a half and three percent. Mm -hmm. The details are also very interesting. Uh, they are not adjusting their labor market outlook. Unemployment stays unchanged. Uh, so it is not that growth is driven by, by a large increase of, of uh, employment. And secondly, they are not moving their inflation forecast. So this implies that it has to be productivity. Uh, we've had three quarters now with U.S. productivity above 2%. So it, it is very interesting that Fed is, is putting credibility in a, in a story where maybe we're leaving this period from, from since the great financial crisis when, when U.S. productivity has been well below 2%. For the stock market, this is actually very important because it implies that inflation is fairly stable around 2% in the medium term. It also implies that productivity increases fall down to the bottom line. People are selling more without increasing cost, with increases profit margins. So that, that's very supportive for the stock market. If this is ongoing, we normally see a productivity pushing into consumption and, and also top line sales because Clearly, when, when productivity is high, people are earning more and therefore have a better consumption uh, ability. So, yeah, I think this is a very, was a very interesting forecast. They, they are the best forecasters in the world and, and they are actually putting a fairly high probability on a Goldilocks scenario. So, so that, that I think one should note. And if you look at the US stock market, I mean, S&P 500 is at 5,200. But if you want to have another leg in this rally, well, you don't have to be very brave in assumptions. If you have growth in the US between two and a half and three, and interest rates between, between three and a half and four, you can actually see a bit of, of upward potential for, for even the US stock market. So yeah, I, I think this is kind of a very interesting forecast. And I think we should put quite a high probability that, that Fed are correct here. And, and then we actually can see a bit of, of continuous support for, for, for U.S. stock markets and therefore a fairly benign environment for the, for the rest of the world. If we, um, if we turn to China then, and uh, we, we've seen a tentative stock market recovery there. We've seen some very low valuations and some supportive policies. Is it time for investors to, to give China another look? So the, the Chinese stock market have had a good run since uh, early February, mm -hmm. um, but valuations are on an historical perspective very low, below the long-term average. And there are a couple of good signs. So the government has uh, said that they want 5% growth. We have seen the RMB uh, depreciate a bit. It's to 730. Uh, if you believe that the long-run equilibrium rate for the RMB is somewhere around slightly below seven. This implies that the export sector is going to see a bit of support here. And China has a very strong impact from currency to export because they are still dominating in, in light manufacturing, ranging from textiles to plastic, etc. So there is a lot of stuff they can export without political implications. So there is a segment in the, the, the stock market. It, it could be renewables, it can be wind, solar, but it can also be light manufacturing where, where China can actually see a bit of export growth. And one should note that a majority of the uh, revenue in, in the Chinese stock market is actually domestic duration. So the, 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 the exposure to, to Europe and, and, and US might be slightly lower than 
people believe. If we look at the st- stock market, it seems to seems to me like we will already have a regionalization where Asia is selling to Asia, US to US, and, and Europe is a little bit in, in the middle of that. So uh, we got some strong data, industrial production up 7%. We saw retail sales coming in fairly strong. So without taking down the risk or saying something very um, unrealistic about uh, lower geopolitical risk, I do think that there is a bit of potential in, in the Chinese stock market. Mm-hmm. But you have to be very selective. And, and you, you know, here at East, we are looking at companies with strong owners, uh, with support from, from long-term structural trends, where valuation is, is attractive. Uh, and, and where the companies have strong ESG credentials. So you, you reduce the risk a bit by, by digging it a bit deeper into to the companies. So, yeah, I, I think that there is a bit of a, a support for also for China. Mm. Mm. Another trend that we've uh, looked a lot at is obviously AI. Uh, we've increasing influx of analysis and financial forecasts about the impact AI will have on, on businesses. Um, what are you paying particular attention to in, in all of that? So as I see it, AI is really something we should uh, look at the short-term trends. Uh, we, we can talk about how it changes society in five to ten years. But for the stock market, I do think that it's the short-term impact that is most important. First and foremost, there is a big support for uh, ships uh, industry. and NVIDIA has a fantastic business model where the gross profits are roughly 80 percent and and where you can see um, EBIT margins at at about 50. Mm -hmm. So when they're increasing sales dramatically, the OPEX impact is is very, very low. Uh, We are already seeing uh, in in the uh, cloud industry a big impact. Um, Many believe that a, a very large part of the current cloud space will be be used already uh, end of this year, early next year by by AI m- m- applications. Um, then you have the second wave, and I, I do think it's it's fairly interesting to look at what uh, um, uh, Microsoft is doing. Uh, the GitHub Copilot seems to take off very rapidly for programmers. We are now currently at 70-80% of the code developed that is actually done with AI support. Uh, they are rolling out their Copilot for security, and most of us are going to use the um, the, 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 the the co-pilot for, for our uh, Microsoft Office system already this year. So, yeah, a lot of short-term um, uh, good traction. In the medium term, I, I like the, the health sector. Uh, AI could potentially be very large there. Um, obviously, we can see it in, in the actual management of her, uh, healthcare facilities. Um, there is a lot of logistic issues that could increase profitability and, and improve services. Um, it, it has a direct impact on operations. I, I think we're not that far away from a period where uh, doctors don't have to take notes uh, anymore because we will do that with, with AI uh, assistance. There is a big impact on pharma innovation. Uh, a lot of new systems for using big data to develop uh, blockbuster drugs is, is coming, uh, and, and that could have a positive impact. Uh, on top of that, you, you obviously also have med tech. So uh, just looking at the Swedish hospitals, if you go back four or five years, you needed to have two doctors looking at an MRI. Today, it's one doctor with AI support, and it's pretty clear that there is many applica- applications where diagnostics could be much more efficient and also better. Uh, and on top of that, you actually have the, the consumer uh, health tech uh, where patients and others can be get better access to data, uh, be- better ability to, to get uh, healthcare fast and, and a lot of wearables that can provide interesting data. So, uh, yeah, I think the, the, we are seeing AI for real. It is not a futurologic uh, uh, thing that will happen in five years. It, it will have big impact on on. On, on the tech sector already this year. And you can also in the near term, term see fairly large benefits in interesting sectors like, like, like medtech. Mm. All sounds super interesting and uh, forward, futuristic. Um, what's on your radar just for next week? Well, uh, in terms of data, there is a bit of a calm now. We are in a period where we have to wait one or two weeks to get a CPI in, in Europe. That will be a very crucial one. It's coming early April. Um, non-farm payroll is coming, but it's also a couple of weeks away. Uh, we've seen the PMIs. Uh, there is nothing that indicates that the US is slowing. 
uh, but we saw a bit of weakness in German manufacturing. So, so that story of the, the weakness of Northern Europe is still ongoing. So, yeah, uh, we will have to wait for the, for the next round of inflation numbers, and, and that will obviously be the most interesting data coming. Mm. So maybe in the meantime, we get a, a few days of Easter to, to rest up and be ready. <laughs> yes, let's definitely hope for a happy Easter for all of us. Thank you.